welcome to another edition of Ease Art Tips. So today I'm going to give you that long promised video about line quality. Now I am a line geek. Line can come from lots of different things. It can come from all these pens. But I also want to talk to you a little bit about dip pens. That'll come a little bit later. So when you're drawing a line, a lot of people will just draw a line. Let's say I want to draw something that I'm going to put some color in. So I'm going to draw a little dog. That's fine, but that line is not terribly interesting. That is just one little line out of the pencil, um, out of the pencil lead, and there's no dimension to it. There's nothing implying light source. There's nothing implying weight. If you got really close up on it, you might get some interesting things going on just because this is pencil and it's got some fraying to it, which can be interesting. But for the most part, it's not terribly interesting. And it really loses interest when you start talking about working with um, pens like the Stadlers that I've shown you that I work with a lot, or the Microns that look like this. These ones that have these different widths. So here's a .1, that's a uni pen. Here is a small, the Stadlers come in small, medium, large. So when you draw something with that, let's say we'll draw a little cat. You can see, again, this is just a line. There's just not anything terribly interesting about that. Well, I spent six and a half years drawing Charlie Brown, Snoopy, the Peanuts gang, because I was working on the licensed clothing line. And I sadly, I just missed meeting Charles Schultz because uh, the woman who joined the team right before I did got to meet him, I didn't get to meet him. But Charles Schultz's hand shook. So when he drew, his hand was oftentimes doing this. And you can see already that's getting to be a much more interesting line than either that or that. To duplicate his line, there was a whole team of us, and we had to draw two lines next to each other and literally fill them in to try to duplicate Charles Schultz's line quality. So just to prove that to you, I'm gonna draw um, Charlie or Snoopy, which I haven't drawn Snoopy in a very long time, so forgive me if this isn't completely accurate. I think his head would be a little bit more round there. He had these comma eyes, funny little nose, and then that spot on his ear, which is always different. You know why that doesn't quite look like Snoopy yet? Because that line quality is not as beefy. If you've seen those uh, MetLife ads, the posters, they've taken Charles Schultz's line and they've blown it up really, really big. So you're really getting to see that line quality up close. So when I start doing that double line that I was talking about and filling that in, you can start to see it's getting a much better line quality. It's getting some personality to that line now that it didn't have before. So now some people will do a line just to hold the color that's going on inside of it, and that is fine as long as you're doing it consciously. If you're not doing it consciously, if you're doing it because that's what you thought you did to do a drawing, then you are not considering your line. And being a line geek, I think one of the most important things is that you at least consider your line. That means make a decision about what you're gonna do with it. Is it going to have character like Charles Schultz's line did? Is it going to imply light direction? So if you've got a sphere, let's say, and let's pretend that the light source is coming from this direction, that's just a simple line, but you can actually imply light direction by making that line a little bit heavier on the far side from the light. already you're starting to see it's getting some weight down on this side which is implying that the light direction is coming from there. So there's lots of different pens that you can use to get line quality. Now the thing with the Stadlers and the Unipens like what I was showing you is that they are a one width line. In fact that's why they are labeled as such. You've got the 0.1, here's a 0.5, that's the Letra set. Um, these microns have everything from a point 
005, 01, all the way up to an eight. That's so that you get the same width of line no matter what you're drawing. But there's lots of tools that you can use to get a variation of line. You can get these paint pens. These are Japanese paint pens, and these actually have a paintbrush on the end, and the ink cartridge sits in here, and you get replaceable ink cartridges. I might have shown this to you before. They're really tricky because you've got to go really light to get a fine line and then press to get a darker line. And because you're having to go up and down on the paper to get that differentiation, it takes a lot of hand training to be able to do that while you're drawing. A lot of people can do this, not as many people can do that while they're doing this. So you can imagine how that would get really tricky. So if we draw that circle, you can see, well, for one thing too, because this is brush, you always wanna be pulling towards you rather than away, otherwise it's gonna splay. Just to prove that, see, I'm having a lot less control on that side than I am on the lower side where I'm pulling towards myself. But just by changing the pressure, you can get a change in the line quality. And that's a pretty interesting line right there. And this one's implying the light is coming from this direction. So that's looking a lot more interesting. So those are fun to play with. Of course, you have probably seen the Sharpies. A lot of kids love drawing with Sharpies these days. I don't know what the width is on them, but they're pretty thick on the, on the thick side. And you can see you're gonna get a pretty standard thickness of line no matter what you do. Even if I'm trying to do lightly, it's still coming out about the same width. So it's not doing what this brush did. Now you can have them where you have the thin on the other side so that you can get your variation of line that way. But again, these are kind of mimicking the microns in that you're not getting a whole lot of variation in line on those. You can do it with pencil. I showed you the Palomino, the Palomino Blackwing. So with that, you can actually get up on the edge. Remember I talked to you about flattening and a side so that you're getting a little bit of width and getting some nice shading area on the lead. And you can roll up onto the point to get a point. So you can indeed roll up onto the point, roll down onto the side to get a thicker side. So you can get some pretty nice line quality with just pencil. Um, Maurice Sendak's work, if you ever get a chance to look at his work up close, you can see some um, really beautiful work and line quality with just a simple pencil. But I wanted to introduce you to one more thing. This is called a dip pen. And the reason is, it is this is the old fashioned um, version of the quill, the feather quill that's been turned into metal. And so this works the same way that those feather quills did back in Shakespeare's time. Let's get a one that looks a little bit better shape. So what this does is you can see that there's a little hole right there in, not in the nib. And the ink comes up and sits in there just like uh, soapy water does when you're gonna blow a bubble. It works the same way. But this tip is actually two different pieces of metal. So there's a split there. So I'll push this down and see if you can see it. Can you see the split there? So that split, the ink is going to pour down from there through that split and onto your paper. So that's how that works. So I'm gonna show you, and the ink that I'm using, this is important, I'm using Higgins Calligraphy ink. I'm not using India ink. The reason is India ink has shellac in it, which makes it shiny and nice, but it can also wreak havoc on say fountain pens and pens like this because um, it can clog it and get really sticky. So one of the best inks that I've been recommended to use by many people um, is Higgins. Um, and I'll put some other recommendations down in the comment commentary. I was talking to my friend Charles Vest and he had some great recommendations. Now the thing is too, for instance, Charles, he'll go through five of these nibs in one sitting because eventually those two uh, edges will flare out and they won't come back together again and you'll lose the ability to have a fine line. So you might wanna switch out your um, pen nibs a lot. Okay, so you've got your ink and I just wanna show you some of the different kinds of dip pens that you can get. This is your standard. You'll get the handle and the nibs come separately. So this is how the nibs will come maybe in a package like this and you can see there's a whole bunch of them in there. And that's because you might run through them like Charles does. You can also get pens that have the nib that will come with something that they sit in. Let's see which one of these is that. This. So you would screw that in like that. And those will come with interchangeable ink cartridges like that. That's kind of like a fountain pen. 
But these are the cheapy kinds. Now people will have preferences on the kinds of handles that they want to use, the shape of the handles, what the materials are. I've known some people who love this tak takikawa. Um, this particular nib is actually for doing a calligraphy. And that's, you can tell from the flare, some of them will have a really fat edge on it, on it right there. Some of them don't have a split at all. Some of them just have this point and the ink is coming up and kind of sitting in there like a well until you put it down. I've not had a lot of luck working with these. I think they're a little bit harder to control. So let's see what kind of line quality we can get with just a regular dip pen. You can see the difference here. I'm gonna try this one. All right, so when you're dipping it into the ink, you want the ink to at least go past that little well that I was telling you about. So you can see it's sitting in there. You don't want it going up here because you're gonna get it all over yourself. The other thing to keep on hand, a paper towel. You're gonna to need it. But look at that line quality. Now I'm pressing, just like I did with the brush pen, light and heavy, light and heavy. But do you see already that line quality is so gorgeous and I'm not even having to work all that hard to get it there. So this is the preferred method for some political cartoonists that work for the New York Times um, or the New Yorker. So you do have to go back and dip a lot. This takes more time to work like this, but once you get really happy with it, once you get a sense of comfort with it, you can get a whole lot faster with it. But already, look at the difference that happens between these spheres and that sphere. And I'll go back and draw my doggy again. Draw him another doggy. Can definitely see the Charles Schultz influence here. Like a big nose. Little dot eyes. And see, I'm starting to run out of ink there. You can tell, I'm starting to get a little bit scratchy. You can see this took a little bit longer to draw than the other one. But look at that line quality compared to that line quality. That's already got such a nicer quality to it. I'm gonna use that word a lot, quality. Um, and the other thing is you can let this dry and your watercolors are not gonna let this blur. So that is a really nice way to work with one of these pens. They don't cost that much, especially when you buy the cheaper ones, which I have some of these. The Take Takehama one is pretty expensive, a little bit more so. And make sure to wash your nibs when you're done. Um, I've don't go through them qu as quickly as Charles does, but uh, you will go through them somewhat. So one more thing I wanted to show you, I'm gonna pull out my little handy dandy watercolor kit and get one of my thin brushes. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna close up my ink because I don't want that to accidentally fall. That would be bad. And I've pulled out another one of these water brushes. So this one came in my little artsy kit I shared with you once before, and I had three widths on them. This one is pretty thin little width, which obviously I didn't do a very good job of cleaning it bad me. At any rate, it will work for this. So here are some dark colors. I'm gonna wet my bristles just by squeezing the brush until the water comes out. There we go. You can see I indeed did not wash my brush, so there's pigment coming up. All right, so I'm just gonna choose a really dark color. You can see that's actually got quite a bit of pigment in it. Now, if you don't wanna just work with black, uh, mixing a brown and an indigo will give you a really good dark, dark color that's got some life to it. Again, it's about taking something that is, you know, can be simple and making it extraordinary, which is what we wanna do as artists. We don't wanna take just the easy um, default way because that's what makes your art look mediocre. To take it up to another level, this is some of the ways to do that. So with a brush, you can actually get some similar effects that you would to say that Japanese brush that I showed you or even the dip pen. 
So you can see I'm changing the um, pressure that I'm putting down on the paper, but look at that line. And yeah, it's getting a little bit wet there. So come back in. So you can actually do this with ink, but ink will tear up your brush. So if you're gonna do that, then make sure you've got a dedicated brush to use for that. But look at that beautiful line quality. So that is another way to draw and get some really cool line. Now, all of these techniques are mimicked with digital brushes if you're working in, say, Procreate or Illustrator or Photoshop. So that is an option to always look for the brushes that they have and see if you can get something that's gonna be able to change the, um, the line weight as you're working on it. My coloring pages, which I'm sharing with you some Procreate videos of my process drawing those, um, those are done with brushes that have line variation to them and that's one of the things I love. So I'm using an Apple Apple pen. It's kind of a combination of my puppy and Snoopy. But you can see already, this is going to be much more interesting to fill in with color than that was. That one to me is my favorite. I love a dip pen. I think the, the quality is fantastic. It's just that you don't always have the time to pull everything out and do work with a dip pen. And I also love working digitally as well, which is so much faster and easier, and especially when you were say watching TV at night and you wanna just draw and have fun. Um, Cause I can't keep my hands still. I can't just sit and watch TV. I, I'm not good at doing idle. I have to be drawing something too. So that's several different methods that you can use to get a nice line quality. And if, you know, now that you know that there is such a thing as a line geek, hopefully you'll turn into one too. Start noticing line in the world around you and start noticing which lines have a nice quality to them versus ones that weren't considered. But please, going forward, as you do your own lines, consider them. Consider what kind of quality you want to have your lines uh, relay. And if you're a cartoonist, of course, or graphic uh, novelist, this is going to be really important for you. So that's it for today's art tip. Thank you for watching and I hope you come back soon. Talk to you soon.